lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. We want to thank you and welcome you once again to the NAACP Forum. We are Brockton's choice for civil rights news. My name is Bishop Tony Branch. I'm your host this evening. We are continuing our political series for those candidates that are running for public office and for those that have already been in office. I have with me today two outstanding gentlemen, two outstanding community activists. We have to my left, Jacob Taggart, and we have to my right, Gene Bradley. Darren Court. Gene, if I said your name incorrectly, please correct me on that. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good I evening. want to correct you too, though, sir. I said it wrong. I said Whoa, Jacob Taggart. Just got to make sure we say Jacob L. Taggart Jr. Jacob L. Taggart Jr. Jr. I'm very proud of my dad's name. So. You, you most certainly are. So yes, we sir. know that how we, I run this, we run it as a conversation <clears> in the living room. And uh, I'm glad that you guys were able to accept our invitation here. So we're here today. Despite my busy schedule. Uh, you, all, both of you guys are pretty busy. I'll though. always make time. Both of you. You guys are crisscrossing. You could be crisscrossing. And when you make time for the NAACP, that is always a good thing. It's a must. We have to be here. So let me just ask you guys this question. What is going right in the city of Brockton? Let's start the conversation off right. What's going right, Jacob? What is going right is, What's going right? in my opinion, and being somebody who's very active and involved in the community, mm -hmm. we have a lot of community um, activists and a lot of organization, neighborhood associations. We have a, a lot of proud people that are really trying to work to better the community. That's, that's probably the most thing. The thing that I see is the biggest plus going on you, in this city right now. The human capital in the city. Yes, the, the, our the, our residents, business owners, they're the most you know our biggest treasure. What are you thinking, Jay? I mean, you know, it's like that's a wonderful question, um, Bishop. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for asking it. Um, in terms of what I think about Brockton, you know, what's going on. I mean, it's the ability that we have in this city to work together, you know, as one people. And of course, what I mean by this is that the diversity that we have in the city. I mean. You know, for the past six years and a half since I've been living in this country, I mean, you know, I have you know I have you know I haven't seen anybody more hopeful than the people of Brockton. I mean, you see the desire to survive, the desire to get engaged, and the desire to making sure that all Brockton, you know, do well. And I think that's a wonderful thing. It can be housing, public safety, youth engagement. We have a variety of organizations that are willing to work together to make it happen. So you guys believe the human capital. You believe cohesiveness. You believe teamwork. So you both of you all are running for city council. Is that currently happening on the city council? I think, yeah, I mean, uh, Mr. Darren Court mentioned about communication. Yep, I yep. think something that could be done, and I mean this as far as every elected official in the city, communication could be a little bit better between the, the different branches. Um, I think that's something that I have a strength working across lines, um, being able to disagree. My wife's here, um, and I, I say this to, when I speak to a lot of people is, we're not going to always You said your agree. wife's here? My wife is here. So at home, is she in charge or you're in charge? She's, the, she's in you're charge. You're saying the right thing on the she's record. Go ahead. Whatever, <laughs> look, whatever she <laughs> says. You're saying whatever she says. You're saying the right thing on the record. The, the reason yeah. why, yeah. Uh, the, the biggest challenge I see going on right now, yeah. we have a lot of challenges, but it's communication. Um, and, and the reason why I mentioned, of course, I'm proud of my wife. Um, but the reason why I mentioned my wife is because, you know, you're not going to just always agree with people you know I ran a mayoral campaign last last um, election and I ran it you know against Mayor Carpenter um, and you know it gets contentious and it gets you know that there's a lot you know it's challenging but you know we've been able to find common ground um, I you know, we disagree on a lot of things as well um, and the same thing with City Council School Committee we're not gonna always agree but I do um, believe communication is something that could be strengthened strengthened between the City Council and you know the mayor's the mayor's office, and I think that's something that I definitely would love to. to it's a challenge I would love to to take on. You believe that city council is is functioning well? I mean, you know, it's like, and again, that's a wonderful question that you ask, Bishop. So, you know, here's what I can tell you about <coughs> what I think about mm -hmm. the Brockton City Council. I mean, you know, I do believe that I see a desire to work together for the yeah. benefits of Brockton. But let's face it, there is always room for improvement, no matter what you do in life. So. In my case, when I become one of the next city council at large, I will use my 
not only ability to talk to people, but my ability to speak different languages so I can approach different cultures and bring them together as one. And I think when it's come down to serving the people, don't forget the people are our boss. So it's important for us to understand that we have to come up with an ideology that will make them feel comfortable, but not threatened. And what I mean by this is that, so we must work for Brockton, not against Brockton. And I do believe that we do have this ability in Brockton and we do have the capacity not just to talk, but to come up with the best solutions. But it has for to be a team effort. Us. But I mean, how do I, you have to have the willingness right, to right. work together as a group. I mean, one thing that my father taught me is that you gotta be able to compromise. Compromise yeah. in the sense of, you know what? I mean, just because I don't like this view doesn't mean we cannot work together. So mm -hmm. we are on this together for the benefits of Brockton. So for me, you know, in terms of questions, I believe there is room, of course, for improvement, but we gotta be able to talk about the issues and being able to accept other people's ideology. Let me ask you this question. Um, in terms of teamwork, again, I'm just going to go back to that. <laughs> so you guys have seen how some issues between the city council and the mayor's office yeah. over the last year. How do you improve that relationship? E either one of you. How do you improve that relationship? But at Somebody... least the public perception of there being some contention. One you know, thing I want to make sure I mention, and um, this is to um, Gene Bradley's point, is about community, we serve the public. Right. Something that That's I've been yeah, doing yeah. since I was a student at Brockton High School was serving the public. You know, coaching youth since I was 19 years old in the city of Brockton, volunteering in the city of Brockton. Um, I have a strong sense of community and working together with different groups. Um, in regards to your question of what, I, what have I seen in the past, I mean, I've been involved you, for the past so, for a while. It's, it's, been, it's been pretty public there. It's been I, some, conten some contentious moments between our, our legislative branch and our uh, our mayor's office. And I guess the question is, at least what, what folks have asked me to ask, yeah. you know, candidates is, how do we improve that relationship or how do we improve that? So I'm not, want to perception? Can I'm I take not this ever going to yeah. be, well, I wasn't finished. I, I'm not ever going to be, I'm not the type of person that's going to give you a political answer. So I'm going to tell you exactly how I see it. So the way I see it right now is we have egos. And this isn't directed towards any certain elected official, but I think sometimes, people have their point of view yeah. and they're not willing or their egos will not allow them to see another point of view. And you know what, at the end of the day, let's not save things until a city council meeting, which I think sometimes does happen. We need to have the conversations beforehand because once we're before in front of the public, the mayor's office and the city council have right. to be together. We can disagree behind doors. That's what I tell my wife, my wife and I, and what my mom and dad taught me. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, we can disagree behind closed doors, but when we come in front of you know the people we represent, we need to be united and clear. We don't need the bickering. And I think yeah. a lot of that is, every, you know, people on all sides is just having communication, right. open lines of communication. If you need to go into the mayor's office or, right. you know, go in and have the conversation and, and it should be, we should be welcoming that as city leaders. So, Gene, know. what are your recommendations? I mean, let's face it. You know, um, as a 27 years old and just moved in this country, you know, about seven years now, and I think what I've seen in Brockton since day one that I came in this country, mm -hmm. although I could not speak the languages, like I said, the willingness of the people of Brockton to work together. What you need to focus on is to focus on the diversity that we have in this in, in, in this city, and I mm -hmm. think it's a strength. It's not a threat. And what I mean by this is that we gotta be able to you know, to have a system in that sense, I mean, to have a city council that is able to recognize the potential that we have in how the city. How do we get there, though? And how do you get this? By, mm -hmm. you know, having a different way of thinking, you know, right. communications. And I do believe communication is the basic foundations to start a conversation and being able to accept other people's ideology in terms of, like, how do I plan to work together? Well, Mr. B I mean, Bishop Tunibu, you know, I speak a couple of languages. I mean, mm -hmm. what, I, what I hope to do, I will be able to work with my partners to making sure that they understand that we are on this together. Because if, if one of us do well, all of us do well. And if one of us you know, does bad, all of us do bad. So the outcome should be all about Brockton, not any personal interest. And my view, yeah. let me just finish this, and my view is that we have to work as a team for Brockton, not as an individual for oneself. And I think that's wrong. So and I'm, I love your answer, but I'm gonna ask you guys this question. Please. There, there, there's a come a time that you don't work as a team. I, and you know, I'm asking that in a sense, there, there, there's there come a time where you say, you know, uh, Councillor Tagger, Councillor Denicourt, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I think you're wrong. I'm gonna work closer with the mayor. Are you willing to step out of that 
step out on that sort of philosophy. Let me tell you that what. That, you, you understand what I'm asking? Of course, be that, more independent that, that's, versus. This is a wonderful question, and I'm going to tell you why. Because that question opens door to a variety of, I don't want to call them, you know, answers, but somewhat of informations. And what I mean by this is that when it's come down to education for all of our children, I am willing to stand on my own to defend that. When it's come down to public safety for our community, I am willing to stand on my own to make sure that we have the best quality public safety. When it's come down to youth engagement, I am willing to stand on my own. When it's come down to small business, I am willing to stand up and voice my opinion about everybody. So those are the issues that I truly carry on. And let me tell you why I choose education. As you know, education is the basic foundation for me because six years ago, I mean, about seven years ago when I came in this country, I could not speak English. Mm -hmm. So I ended up learning English from the Brockton Public Library, moved to Massasoit, went to Suffolk University. So by being able to have the wonderful people in Brockton who gave me a reason to believe and a reason to hope, it helped me understand that they want me to do not just for myself but for all of us. Mm -hmm. I would like to see the same opportunity that was given to me given to someone else, and I will send on my own to defend that. So yeah. you, so you, you would, you, would you, so you two, would you step out similar to what Gene is saying? Again, I, my long service of, of community work here right. in Brockton, I've proven it. I right. sit on, you know, I was elected, I was appointed by the mayor and the, approved by the city council to sit on the diversity commission. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. under your leadership as chairman of the diversity commission, I was elected um, vice chair. Um, and you know, I, I mean, it can be proven, I've st stood by myself. And at the end of the day, when we leave a meeting, we all agree we're here for the right reasons, but there's those times that you have to stand for your principles and, the, and what you feel is right, and then be willing to come back to the table and, you know what, move on. But yeah. again, I've proven, I've, I have no problems with being the one out of 11 you know, being that one no or that one yes principles. against ten, you have to stand. So on let's your talk principles. about principles. Let's talk about standing on principles. Proposition two and a half, or the, our tax levy of two and a half, maximizing that, passing, uh, uh, increasing revenue by making sure the property taxes are levied at their maximum. What is your position on that? I think we've so this year currently we have gone the mayor up has, the, the two has, and a half. Correct. I think the past few years we've. Have not been tentative and not done it. Yep. Um, I think that the you know from my conversation with leaders at the state level, I think it's something that we need to do. Again, the the issue when it comes to taxes and and from the the business owners and the residents I speak to on a regular basis is people will have no problems with paying their taxes. Their share. They want to, but you want to receive the services you're paying for. And sometimes you know. And there's different challenges we face as a, as a city, and there's other towns that do face it as well. Yep. Um, but people just, you know, we have an underfunded and understaffed police department. So sometimes they well, can't... You're talking about the police department. Let's talk yeah. about, I want to piggyback off of one of the things that Gene was talking about, education. So in order to maximize educational dollars, get, yes. uh, would you support a Proposition 2 and a half override? Is, well, here's the thing as a city councilor, because you could support it, and I would. The, the problem is making sure the administration, that money is earmarked for certain things. You know what I mean? If, so if the like, citizens came to you, sir, with a referendum, Proposition 2 and a half override, you would support it? Again, if the money is used properly, appropriately. You know, for I, I know department. we're doing two and a half, of course. Two and a half percent, I understand, will probably generate about another three to three million dollars. Um, That's, I, I think, that you're around three million because right I also right. co-chair um, with hiring and recruitment for Brockton mm -hmm, Public mm -hmm. Schools. And my first question is, um, how much of that is going to be used towards the school? And I, from what I was told, mm -hmm. uh, you know, approximately a million of that three mm -hmm. would be used. You know, that brings back twenty-five teachers. I uh, most certainly would support, and I think the community would an go override. on override if the money is appropriately. Gene, what's your position on Proposition Two and a Half override? Wonderful question. I mean, you know. Mr. Tony Branch, like I said, I mean, you know, the citizen of Brockton will be my boss. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes, not sometimes, you must always follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And um, if the people of Brockton come to me and saying that this is what we believe, I'll be more glad to go for it. But, but before I do this, what I can tell you is that we got to understand the state, you know, financial of our city. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to take any decision that will sort of like make it a challenge Talk for Talk a little us. bit about the state's I responsibility. I mean, how do I put this? When it's come down, what I mean by state, locally speaking, not just yeah. the entire Massachusetts. Yeah. So yeah. when it's come down to finance, and I think it's important for you to understand that you cannot just spend, 
you got to understand that, okay, if I spend this, when am I going to find that? Just right. in case something right. happens. So you got to be, you got to be able to understand that, you know, just in case something happened, how am I going to face it? Mm -hmm. So you don't just spend just for the sake of spending. You spend because you know there's a possibility for some types of revenue to come back. So, so if, you're supporting the override? No, what I'm saying is that if the people, if the people of Brockton, you know, after we do a lot of analysis and determine that, okay, mm -hmm. voting like that will not make Brockton in the face of, how do I put this, trouble, I'll mm -hmm. be more glad to do so. Mm -hmm. But if it will sort of like hurt Brockton and the people of Brockton says no to me, I will not. So it, it's all depends what's going on. So you, to that so you, but you guys are joining the city council. So let me be clear, you're joining the city council. We need to maximize revenue. Mm -hmm. We have a, a school committee that may go to a city council. They may do, they, we, they are, begins a conversation. Basically what you're saying, we do a survey and say, we have to do this proposition to and have override in order to fund schools, in order to help and schools. You would support that is I mean, what I'm asking. Like, what, what I'm saying is that it's like, it's not just saying that I will support it without even knowing that where that money is coming from. That's what you've got to understand. You oh, know, it's, it's coming from, no, no, well, no, I think it's more important no, 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 though, no, no, what, how no, the money is appropriated what, what I'm saying is that it's that like if the money is No, the two and a half is coming from no, the, no, the residential No, I know, I know. If, no, yeah. well, let's face it, though, it's like, what if some of them don't want to pay for it? That's what I'm saying about if the well, people- Well, that may be true. You no, know, right. go, you know, I, yeah. I don't want to just say yes, just but for the sake of saying yes. See, there's certain You have to be specific. Hold on. Can I just finish? And what I'm saying is that if the people are willing to pay the money, and the money is there, why not? But if they are not willing to do it, and we don't have the money, we're just gonna sort of like force something. You have to kind of like think deep in terms of like what should you do. See, so we're talking about because I want to because we're me, getting a little bit more time no, here. No, well, let, and let you ask a let, clear let, question. I know, is it just, yes or no? Hold on, let me if just it's ask, for Brockton public debate, schools, so hold, hold, let me just let <laughs> like, me just we're let me just say education. this to you. Let me just say this to you. So when we when we talk about a proposition two and a half override, I want to be absolutely clear. So so the audience understands this. We're saying that the city is going to levy that two and a half and people are going to pay it, one way or the other. The question we got to ask. So are, are you the, willing to do that? Let's face it, if the people are willing to pay <clears> it, <throat> why not? That's what you got to ask. I mean, that would, are you willing to vote yes if the on people, override? Well, if the people are willing to, you know, you got to understand, like I said, it's not only about voting. It is when about you voting. No, no, when you cast a vote, the question you got to ask, what is the consequences? Do, am, am I going to vote for me or am yeah. I going to vote for the people of Brockton? So if the people are willing to put the money in there and they are, you know, they, they are willing for us to spend it, why not? What, so you I'm would saying? vote for an override? I, you know, according to the people, if Listen, they want me to okay. do so. Listen, oh, yes. I said this five, ten minutes ago. You will always get a clear answer from me on where I stand. If that money, the override is for, for education. Where it was one million which, or three million? One, three. 500,000 right now, we're in desperate need of funding for our schools. I 100%, I want people to be clear on that. I 100% would, would say yes to that if it's going to our schools and so our you would youth. So like, you would look at some legislative language that would target that funding, yes. that educational funding, 100%. directly to that. Because that's the problem. City Council, we can you know, yeah. support it, and but you, the, the, the administration, the mayor's office is how he's the day to day. Right, That's right. the day to day. So, yeah, that would have to be so you clear, guys but it would go, I definitely would. Because I, I, this is a very good conversation. He, he, you know, just before you end, yeah. here's, what I, here's what I would like you to know. It's like, as you know, you know, I'm one of the trustees for the Brockton Public Library. Yep, I do. And recently, you know, according to the mayor, you know, proposal for the budget, Did I think he, was requested, there some cuts? he requested that we should cut, you know, 10% of that budget. Fortunately, oh. they give it back. What's the dollar, amount, was, for the, you know, what's the dollar you know, amount for the citizens? You know, I was the only trustee right. who voted against it. I know, but tell the citizens what you know, the dollar amount you know, is. And, and fortunately, on top of my head now, I don't have the, don't I don't know, have okay. the number, but I was the only person who voted for it. And you know what? Fortunately, voted for the cut? No, voted against the cut. The cut. Fortunately, okay. the mayor, you know, say, okay, we all set to go, so we got all the money back. You see, so I'm proud to cast that vote because I know that I was casting that vote for the education of our children and for the education of all of us, and that's would what I'll do. Would you guys define yourself as fiscal conservatives? Fiscally responsible. Fiscally responsible, Jay? Um, yeah, why not? Uh, now let's talk about perception of Brockton. <laughs> this is a big, big topic. How big is it? Do we have a crime problem <laughs> in the city of Brockton? Yes or no? We have a lot of challenges, Brockton. Crime yes, problem. we do. Yes, or no? yes, we do. Jane, you know we do have, um, you know we do have a lot of difficulties when it's come down to, you know, crime our, problem, our criminal justice system, and I think there is room for improvement. So we have a crime problem. Um, how do I put this? Like I said, I do believe that we we are facing, you know, some difficulties in Brockton, but I guess you know that's why we are working on it so to see you, how we can 
and so when you, we, but when you look at the statistics, yeah. the FBS, we are we are in, 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 in terms of other urban <laughs> environments, we are very low. I like that. in you terms asked, of <laughs> you asked them to do we. So when I but what, but, but, am in the community, but I'm at, but I'm you know me, Bishop. Right, I'm all right. about the numbers. Right, but I mean, but so the FBI is saying that our statistics. We really don't have a crime problem. But citizens like all Com oh, Compared we, to what, though? That's. Well, con con compared, compared to other to cities with 95,000, 150,000 people. Mm -hmm. But my, my concern is, is that as we walk through the city, and you know this, and you know this, and I always end my speeches by saying, say something great about the city of Proctor. People really believe that we, you can't come outside your door without getting shot or stabbed. That is not true. And that's why when it's I a mindset, but to ignore it, though. Like, ignore and I'm not, what? What I, I ignore it, though. And I'm not saying, I get what you're saying when you talk about numbers, but to. Yeah, you're right. We need. I try to promote what's positive about Rockland, but I'm not going to ignore. No, I needed to hear that. I'm not going to ignore I to hear that, that right. there are shootings that go on. We had a shooting today um, in a neighborhood, actually a neighborhood where it's close on Silver, I want to say. There was um, some gunshot. Good friend shelter. of mine. You yep. know what I mean? No, there was a bullet found yep. in a barrel. We have we have like challenges. In, in relates to, to crime in the city. We have a lot of great Identify things. Identify the crimes, violence. Shootings, I mean, we've had, I want to say five, six, maybe what do you do about, seven. What do you, what, do you, what do you try to do about challenging gun violence? What do you do? Well, we got to get the guns off the streets. Um, but the biggest challenge you we have right now. You for gun restrictions? The, eh, <laughs> that's on the state level. But, Are you um, for gun restrictions? I'm for legal ownership. You know, Are you for a, gun restrictions? Let's face it, it's like the question, I would like to follow through the question. Go that for you it, asked go for it. Go ahead. No, no. Okay, so he's, you know, um, you know, you know, once it's come down to crime, and I said, you know, perception can be very interesting. But you're fight, depending, willing to fight against wait, it, though. Depending on how, well, I've been fighting. You're good. I've good, been good, fighting, good. you know, I've I been fighting. I just want to make sure you guys say that on the record. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think, you know, I think Brockton is one of the best places for anybody That's to That's what I wanted to hear. And, you know, Brockton right. is, I'm going to say it straight to you, folks. Brockton is one of the best places for anybody to live. I'm going to tell you why. Um, you know, when I go outside of Brockton, let me just trying to be more specific. Um, when I used to be a trustee for Master Sweat, or mm -hmm. this student trustee for Master mm -hmm. Sweat Community College, I used to travel from Brockton to, um, to Worcester. And sometimes when I go there and, um, you know, they ask everybody to introduce yourself and when they get to me and I say stood Brockton, up and I said, what happened? Some of my friends say, oh, Brockton, <laughs> what's going on? And I, and, I, no, and I stood exactly. up and I stood up and I said, well, what do you know about Brockton? Right. And right. some of them are very naively talking, say, well, gun, gun. I'm like, no, I live in Brockton. You know right. what? I'm not saying that there's, no, there's nothing going on. But, Excellent. you know, I've been living in Brockton for six and a half years, and I haven't seen anything. And let's face it, the question we've got to ask, who are causing those crimes? Well, as you know, most of those people don't even live in Brockton. Mm. Some of the people that come to our city causing those problems, they don't even live here. So we cannot just bashing our city just for the sake of people. And you know, I'm the kind of person, if there is no substance, mm -hmm. I will not talk about it. So substance matters to me. And when it's come down to Brockton, I am willing and determined to do anything that I could possibly do to put Brockton in its positive way. And I think Brockton is positive, and you who are watching are positive. So let's keep putting out there oh, a positive so message for you all give, of us. You can give the political speech later. <laughs> it's not a political speech. You know, Tony Branch, it's not a political speech. Well, I get it. So Brockton took a kid right, from no, Haiti. Yeah, yeah. Brockton took a kid from Haiti with a funny accent six years and a half ago who could not even speak a word of English. And now here I am standing in front of you. So you're one of our talking. success stories. Well, I mean, you're if you want to call it, if you yeah. want to call it this, I would greatly appreciate it. But I think Brockton creates me. Brockton gives me a reason to hope and a reason to believe in life. And I think this is what we gotta talk about. And fortunately, as you see, the enterprise has been talking about it. And I think, you know, I'm happy because people can see that we do have excellent people. And you know what, it's not only me. We have amazing other young people out there doing exactly what I'm doing. So Maybe I'm somewhat too bold or more determined You mentioned to the enterprise. It. Do you think that we have enough positive coverage? Well, so what I want to make just, sure. Not, not just the enterprise. I think, I think what Mr. I want to make sure I think Mr. Tiger in, uh, would like to add something. You know, a lot of people could talk, you know, talk, but I've been doing this for my whole life in Brockton. Yeah. Um, I've been promoting what's good about Brockton. I've been, I've done cleanup crews. I still coach in Brockton with Brockton's youth. I, I want to promote what's good about this city because there's so much. Where are you promoting? Good about Where's this. the media coverage about that? I promote it. it uh, you use a lot of social media. Social media. A lot okay. of social media. Um, the way things have changed from when I was younger, growing up in Brockton, we right. didn't have that access to people, that connection to people. Um, I think. It, and sad to say, but negativity sells. And I've had this conversation with reporters from the Enterprise. The negativity sells. And that's, I mean, you look at, we have a, a great program at East Middle School. 
-hmm. going outside um, in the park. We brought back all these spares, um, Jose Montero, uh, I'm actually vice president um, of that organization, Elite Sports Program. We haven't had any media or any elected officials come down and actually see it and promote what we're doing. So we need but to we do have a better a couple job. Hundred, yeah, but so, we also yeah. need to do it too. We can't blame the media with no, no, right no, now the way no social blame. media is. Right. Because it, that's a business. Right. Media is business. They're selling papers. Good story is sad to say. The, the negativity is in the front page. Right. The, the, the good story about all the, the young people that we have in the city working. So you believe in the using... So you, but Did you do something but, funny? No, I'm going no, I'm I'm to tell you something funny I didn't this know morning. if I told you. I posted a photo on, uh, on the Brockton Hub. And um, someone commented saying that, well, I think Jane is looking for someone to date. I'm not kidding. It's there. It's there. It's mm -hmm. there. I posted a photo. Yeah, I posted a photo. I posted a photo. I see why you like. I posted a photo. I posted. I know I left. You, you, I do, you do know we're, we're, in a, we're in the living room, right? No, now. I'm, just, yeah, I'm just saying this for Jacob Tiger. So I posted this. No, you know, talking know. about my campaign. Someone oh, comment you. on it. Somebody said, "Well, I think you're looking, looking for, a date? for somebody to date." Yeah, you you might well reconsider. That. <laughs> you know the sad thing is, though, and I'm, I'm happy. And he he mentioned it. We have a lot of young people, and I you know respect you as Thank a you. as a man. I appreciate first it. and foremost. Thank you. You know what I mean. Um, but we have a lot. lot of young young brothers and sisters that are that are becoming involved in Brockton. Yeah. Um, you know, po politically, yeah. um, and just being a community leader. Yeah. Yeah. That's also our responsibility. The loudest people on social media are the negative people. We also <laughs> need to combat our, that our, and our start. Ma well, our mature adults. Huh? No, it's our funny. Mature, I mean, yeah, it's so right, funny. But it's true, right? Well, so, listen, we, we don't have much time left, and I want to give you guys some, close, <laughs> some, some closing statements, but I just have to ask you this question. Code enforcement, are we, are we, are we doing a good job at this? Think we what do is your position? Job. So the enterprise is running a, fr a front page story mm -hmm. on the uh, auto repair shops. Do you guys have a position on that? I clear on as far as the city council's position. Yeah, I do think there needs to be a cap. You I do. do. I do think there You're needs to be. Not concerned about the economic impact. Well, what I'm concerned about is cannibalizing the business. These, how many garages do we need in the city? We have a lot, but I do think we have to have a limit. We have to attract different businesses. It can't be just one type so of business. So you would support the ordinance as written? I would support a cap. A you would support cap. the ordinance as written? As written right now? Yeah. I want to look at it more. Jane? I would like to look at it. Too. You would like to look yeah. at it? Go through it. But I do feel, again, I want to make sure I'm clear, I, I definitely think there needs to be a cap. We can't have a city just full of garages. We need other things that cater to, I'm in business, we need anchor businesses that are going to attract people and we don't want to cannibalize each other. How many garages do we need? That's mm -hmm. not we're not setting our business owners up for success if we have garages all over the I, I just want to make sure you know I mean? you are you are you a businessman or I'm a, business? a businessman. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think yeah. I, I'm just gonna make yes. yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah. make it just so, yeah. so he's you know he's this is what I can tell you. I would like to see the face of downtown Brockton change. What I mean by this is that I would like to see Two more way traffic? more more one hundred percent. They're already working on it. One hundred percent. So I would time. like to see this one hundred percent. But what I would like to see, I would like to see a downtown Brockton yep. where people can come and walk and have some fun and have small business. So I would like to. Well, obviously I'm single right now, but I would like to come downtown. Did with you guys my hear that? You know, with my He's girlfriend. Single, so you know, the, hey, so the, wait, 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 wait. He's single, so that it's. <laughs> I'm married. You, ain't, I'm <laughs> you I mean, like, I would, wait, you never know. I mean, if I do, you'll be invited. Well, oh, I would, yeah, what I would single, like to say Leo. Now I get the picture. So, 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 he said Leo? Now yeah. you might as well. Man. We got one minute. I'm like, oh, go, yeah, go. It, it's all good. So, I mean, I, I'm loving this. So, well, what I was trying to say is that, you know, when it's come down to code enforcement, I think there's always, there's always okay. room for improvement. I mean, of course. So you, would, you both would look at, thank you, you both would look at the ordinance. Of course. All yeah. right, 30 seconds, Gene. Give your closing argument. Uh, my fellow Brocktonians, my name is Gene Bradley. The Wayne on Court. Contact information. I am a candidate for Brockton City Council at large. Six years and a half ago, I came in this country without speaking a word of English. You opened the door for me. You give me a reason to hope. You teach me not only how to behave, but also what to do in society. So fortunately, I was able to go to Master's Suede, graduated with a double major, and then went to Suffolk University, graduated um, with, a, you know, with my BA in political science. As we speak, I'm doing a master over there. So I work for the city. I work for Senator Michael Brady. So I'm asking you to give me a chance, not only for me, but for all of us, especially for our young people. September 19th. I ask you for your vote. Thank you so much. Take a tagger. Um, thank you to the NAACP. Thank you. That I call you Chairman Branch. <laughs> um, and thank you, Mr. Downcourt. Um, my name is Jacob L. Tagger, Jr. I'm a lifelong resident in the city of Brockton. I live here with my wife and two children. I am asking for your vote 
to put me on the city council as your next city council at large um, to continue my long history and work in the community to represent the best interests of the residents of the city of champions. Um, on September 19th, I ask for your vote and I ask for your support. Thank you. We are the NAACP Forum. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Oh. <laughs>